Hi, I'm Brandon Grazley. I teach computer science in high school and I want to teach you a little bit about Booleans. I had a request for this video so let me show you how Booleans work in Java. I've got two int variables declared already, x and y, and you can see that they are equal to each other right now. They're both 10 and I'm going to create a new Boolean which I'm just going to call b for now because I'm going to use it for a bunch of different stuff and in that Boolean I'm going to ass uh, assign a value of either true or false. Booleans always contain only those values, true or false. And so I'm going to have the value um, is x equal to y. I'm going to put that in brackets just to sort of highlight it. You don't need the brackets. But this is going to be a comparison. Java will compare the values in x and y and if they are the same that bit inside the brackets will take on the value true, the boolean value true, which will then be stored in um, that b variable. So let's print out that value b is equal to, and let's put the value of b, so that'll print b equals and then either true or false. Let's run it and see what we get. It should be true in this because they are equal, uh, they are equal values. Now if I were to simply change one of these, make that 20, so it's 10 and 20, b should now be false, and it is. So in this way, the computer, the, the program, can check on the fly to see uh, if two values are equal and then make decisions in the program based on this value of true or false. And that's the whole reason we have Booleans. It's all about decision making. It's all about deciding do I take this path in the program or that path? Do I continue to run this loop or is it time to stop running this loop? Do I even begin this loop? So let's um, talk about some of the other options that you have. Um, instead of equal to, we also have less than is x less than y and what will value will this take here I should get the value true because x is less than y let's run it and we get true if I change that to greater than and run that I should get false and I do now you also have uh, you can combine those together I can have less than or equal to should be true and it is if I make them equal it should still be true. Okay, so let's think about what we've got so far. The double equal sign for e checking equality. We have less than and greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. And there's one more that's really interesting, and that's not equal to. Um, so exclamation point with an equal sign will say, are these not the same? And if they are not the same, this will say true. If they are the same, it will say false. They are the same right now. This should be false. Let's run it and see. And it is, because they are the same, and this statement is a false statement, that x is not equal to y is false. OK, so that's pretty good. We can also use this exclamation point to change or flip the value of any existing Boolean. And we're going to do that in a second. OK, so let's write a program that will generate a prime number. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to create what's called a flag. Booleans are, are great for this. Um, we're going to have a flag called um, found prime, and it starts out being false. That is, we have not yet found a prime number. And we're going to generate prime numbers. Uh, we're going to generate numbers, check to see if they're prime, and once we have found one, we're going to print it out. And in the meantime, we'll print out all the failed checks. Now, prime numbers other than 2 are not even. They're all odd. And uh, there's quite a few of them, though. They're, they're surprisingly dense out there. So you can get lots and lots of prime numbers. So we're going to try to generate a number between, say, like 100 and 1,000 and check to see if it's prime. And it shouldn't take us too, too long to find one like that. So the way we're going to do it, we're going to set up a loop. We're going to generate a number. Um, we're going to check for divisors, try to find something that divides evenly into it, um, and then uh, we're going to print uh, print it out if it's prime. Now we're going to do this actually with a loop, so the pseudocode that I've got here is a little bit simpler than it really is going to be. Okay, so let's start off by storing the value somewhere. So we're going to call it uh, potential prime. I'm going to say p prime, potent for potential prime. And I'm going to start off by saying 
uh, just making that zero for now. We're going to generate a number in, in a second randomly. Now, uh, what we're going to do then is start our loop that says if we have, uh, as long as we haven't found a prime, let's start performing these steps of trying to get one. So we're going to have while, I'm going to, I can write this in a couple ways, found prime equals equals false. That is, is this variable storing a f the value false? If it is, start this loop. And uh, I want the loop to end there. Oh, sorry, not quite there. Let's go down one more. There we go. So if that value is false, that is, we have not found a prime, then go ahead and make a number and see if it's prime. I'm going to write this in a different way, though, because th although this is fine, I want you to start using this notation instead. While not found prime, that is, while we have not found a prime, found prime will be true when we have found a prime. So while we have not found a prime, exclamation point, let's generate a number. All right, let's do that. Um, first, we need a random number generator. I better build one up here. That sounds good. And now let's generate a new random number, and we're going to make that our potential prime. So p prime equals r dot next int. Now I have to put this inside of a range, and I want a number between what did I say, a hundred and a uh, thousand, somewhere in that range. So if I generate a random number up to five hundred, let's say uh, four hundred fifty. Actually, I'll show you why in a second. Pick a number between that'll pick a number between zero and four forty nine. I'm going to double it. That'll give me an even number for sure between 0 and 900. And to that, I'm going to add the number 101. Now I've got a number between 101 and 1001. So that's pretty good. Maybe I should add uh, nine, make it 99 instead. That'll take me up to 999 instead of 1001. OK, that's pretty good. I've generated a random number that's odd because I doubled it and added an odd number. Now it's definitely odd. OK, I need to check and see if it's prime, though. So let's look for divisors. To do this, I need to, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this in a very simple way. I'm just going to check every number, starting with 2. Well, I guess I could start with 3 because I know it's not an even number. Starting with 3, I can check every number up until a certain point to see if this is a prime number. Let's try it. I'm going to start it with a for loop. And I need a, I need a number to check as a divisor. So I'm, I'm just going to call that current. I'll make it an int. Int current equals, I'm going to start at 3. Current is less than, for now I'm going to say it's less than the, that potential prime that I have. We're going to make this faster in a second. And each time I go through, I'm going to check and see, is this, um, is the prime number divisible by the current thing that I'm checking? Now I want you to see I've actually used a Boolean here. Current less than P prime. This is a comparison, and so it will check, is current less than P prime? If it is, this is true. And while it is true, the for loop will run. So the for loop is an initialization. It's basically a while loop, checking this condition, and then at the end of the loop it's going to run this incrementation increasing current. So a for loop is really like a special while loop with a, an initialization and an increment step built into it. Okay, so while I'm inside here, what do I need to check? If p prime mod, that is, we're going to divide by current, and check and see is that equal to zero. So it does p prime divides by current, takes the remainder, and checks to see if the remainder is zero. And we'll f we're familiar with that from earlier in the course. So if the current number is a divisor, I want to do something. How do I let my program know that I have found a divisor and that this number is not prime? Well, currently my found prime value is already false because I don't. I haven't been able to tell it anything. Hmm. Well, what I could do right now, I, I could say that I have not, that I, I uh, see if I have not found a prime number still after this is all done, then 
this for loop will end. I get to the end of the while loop. It hops back up here and checks, have I found a prime? It'll still say false. So that's fine. How do I stop this for loop from running? Well, that's what the break statement is for. If I find something that is a, if I get to here and it's a zero, I'm going to break. The for loop is done. And I come back up and run the while loop over again. Well, let's pause for a moment though. What happens if I get to the end of the for loop and I have not yet found a divisor? At the moment, it still says found prime equals false. How do I tell the application that I have found a prime, that I ran out of things to test? It's not really good enough what we're doing here. So what we're going to do is build in another flag. Uh, I'm actually, hmm, I'm going to build it here. It's sort of more efficient to build it earlier, but I'll do it right here. So I'm going to make a, a boolean called found divisor. And at the moment, it's going to start off with false. Instead of breaking then, I'm going to set the value of found divisor to be equal to true. If I find a divisor, say that I found a divisor, and when I get to uh, the end here and it hops back up to the beginning of my while loop, um, well, here I'll have to back up just a little bit. That's what happens if I if I get to um, if I do find a divisor. Now, when the for loop is done, sorry, that was a little bit of a slow way to say this. Have I found a divisor? If I have not found a divisor yet, if I have not found a divisor, that means I went through the whole for loop and did not find a divisor, and that means that found prime must be true or should be true and that will break out of my while loop. Okay, this is all pretty good. The only thing that I want now is I'm going to move this. Uh, no, that, that's fine like that. I was going to say this line I have to move up, but as long as uh, my found divisor value gets sort of reset at the start of every loop, I should be okay. All right, let's finish this off then. Sorry, that was slightly slower than I wanted. System.out.println found a prime. It's put a space and that prime that we found is p prime. Okay, so let's run it and see where we're at. Yeah, we found a prime. It's 167, which maybe is prime, I don't know. Um, you know what I think I want to do is put in one more statement system.out.println trying, oops, trying, and what value are we trying? p prime. Try, that way it'll tell me each time I try a new value. Let's see how long it takes. We tried 473, that wasn't prime, 881, and it was prime, it's 881. If I run it again, maybe we'll get a little further. Yeah, a few more before I found a prime. It actually doesn't take that long, does it? Looks like we're usually getting it in two or three tries. So that's pretty neat. So there's a way to generate uh, a three-digit prime number. It's not super efficient, but it's not too bad. So one more, actually I'll show you one more uh, way to make this a little bit more efficient. We've got booleans all over the place here. But right here, we check to see if current is less than p prime. We don't actually have to go that far. The biggest number that we could divide into p, uh, our potential prime, uh, is only one third of that value because uh, we can't divide it by two. So we don't even have to go up to a two times half of this number we can start off with something a lot smaller. So I'm going to make a new int called um, one third, and it's going to be equal to p prime uh, divided by three, and I'm going to add one just to be sure that we are not uh, undercutting because uh, we do um, truncate, uh, like cut off decimal places when we do that. So this is a third of the prime. I only have to go that far. I don't have to check all of the values. So let's try again. That way my for loop won't run quite as many times because it won't check a whole bunch of values that couldn't possibly be a factor. And wow, we're getting them really quickly here. I was hoping to get one there. We've tried we had to try two that time. Okay, so there we go. So a small change and it doesn't check quite as many possibilities. 
All right, so that's a whole lot of Booleans. I hope that helps to sort out what they're for. Thanks.